the truth about genetics that no one admits. So this video is a response to the one and only Dave McConey of the Brains and Gains podcast, and I think he raised some really good points that I want to address. This is an interesting topic and one that has been much discussed, especially over the past few years. So his main point is that there is a bell curve with regards to how people respond to training or their ultimate muscular potential. And I actually 100% agree, and it is likely normally distributed. So most people are pretty average. Some people are gifted. Some people are absolutely complete freaks. Not many people, but some people on the tail end of the distribution. And then on the other side, some people are below average and some people are just not gifted at all for muscle growth. And so on this one side, you have the complete freaks, the guys who build muscle without trying, the guys who looked, you know, like full grown adults in middle school, the guys who, you know, benched 185 their first time in the gym, guys who are setting world records eventually, guys who everyone thinks they're on steroids when they're actually natural, the elite genetics, the freaks of freaks, that top 0.001%. The guys who put three inches on their arms in six weeks. Maurice Jones drew and how he refused to do upper body training because his arms would get too big too quick and he couldn't carry a football like cradle it well anymore. Aaron thought that that was bullshit. And so Maurice Jones drew said, okay, cool. Like, let's give it six weeks. And in six weeks, he put like three inches on his arms and like he was a little guy. I think he was like five, six, five, seven, relatively short arms kind of made a show about how the football didn't cradle as well in there anymore. And Aaron said, well, I guess you're right. Your arms do get too big. And that's why they don't train arms. And sometimes guys on this side of the bell curve, sometimes they will realize how good they have it and how easy it is for them or how high they can get in comparison to the average person. But sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they just think it's pretty normal or they're, you know, on a professional football team and they're just surrounded by people who are also freaks. So sometimes they don't actually know how gifted they are. What do you mean you can't deadlift 405? Just just pick it up. If you're homeless, just buy a house. Now on the other side of things, you have people who are legitimately just not gifted at all for muscle growth. No matter what they do, they're just not going to respond in the same way, even if they devote large amounts of time, energy, and effort to the pursuit of gaining muscle. In the extreme, you have people who are, you know, confined to a wheelchair and they have muscular dystrophy and it doesn't matter what they do. No matter what, even if they work really hard, even if they have an optimal program, etc., they're just not going to get the same kind of results. And, and you can understand then why I will have a strong reaction when I hear something like this. You just don't train hard. That's the reason why you don't have a good physique. I, I took offense to that. That's all I needed for him to do that. And it, it became personal with me. And Dave proposed an interesting thought experiment. You have 100 clones, so identical genetics, and you put them on different training plans as well as different diets. Then you take 100 random people from the population, put them on the same diet, the same training plan, which one would have more variation? So in other words, what is more important, the genetics or the diet and the training? And he proposed that the genetic variation would be far more important than the actual training plan. And I actually agree. If you look at a lot of studies, the intersubject variability is going to play a huge role. And you see people on the same training plan, the same diet, same everything, and they get wildly different results. However, there was another example from the Stronger by Science podcast that was put out like last week or so. And in that, Greg described someone who had phenomenal genetics, but they were just chronically under eating. They were eating very, very few calories. And then when they started eating, they absolutely blew up. They gained like 60 or 70 pounds of muscle uh, over the course of like 18 months or something. Easy moved over to America from Nigeria, I think when he was 14 or 15. And he was just he was just rail skinny. He's like 5'11", 6 foot. Uh, and I think he was like maybe 130. So really, really skinny guy. 18 months later. I walk in and I see Easy. And like I, I rode the bus with Easy. Like I knew him well. I knew what he looked like. And it took me like 15, 20 seconds to place who this guy was. Because he'd gone from like 
130 to 210 in about 18 months. And we're, and we're talking all muscle. Like he was still very lean. And turns out he just didn't know that like you had to eat food. And so it doesn't matter how good your genetics are if you're messing up the other variables, especially the training and especially the diet. Could be your sleep, could be your stress. And there are a lot of variables that go into the training process. Genetics is just one of them. So there are a lot of people who have better genetics than they think because they are messing up the other variables. And if you mess them up on a grand enough scale, you just won't see very much progress. And Dave referenced something that I said on some Instagram post or something. The longer I train, the better people tell me my genetics are. And that's absolutely true. Like my first few years of training, or even before I started, you would never say, oh, this guy, fantastic genetics or anything like that. Like that's just not, I didn't get those comments at all. Even like two or three years ago, people didn't really say that. Whereas now they're like, oh, you're a freak or like you're the elite or like, oh, but you have fantastic genetics. Like I can't do that. Well, maybe you can't, but maybe you can. You don't know that either. And I see it as a range. There's people who are fatalistic, pessimistic, realistic, optimistic, and delusionistic. So there's a lot of people who are black pill. They're on this side of things. They think, oh, I'll never make it. I'll never be able to do anything. I'm such and such rage. I have such and such wrist size. Oh, I didn't blow up in the first two months of training. Oh, look at this guy. Look what this guy did. Oh, my friend did this. Well, don't look at your friend's genetics. Look at what else that they were doing. And maybe they're doing stuff wrong that you can't learn from. But in a lot of cases, the guys who do well, there are reasons. Genetics is one of them, but you can't learn genetics. You can't teach genetics, okay? And so I'll never say like, oh, you know, buy my 18 inch arm program because there's gonna be a lot of people who can never get there, no matter what. So I'll never use that as marketing and I'll try to minimize the amount that I lean on my physique. Some people, that's all they fucking have. They don't have information, they don't have experience, they just have the genetics, and often it's coupled with steroids as well. And so that's the only card they have. And I don't like that card. I don't like playing that card, and I try to minimize it as much as possible. And I've noticed a lot of people are in this fatalist group, this black-pilled mentality, and this is the group that I'm trying to kick their ass most of all to actually get them to train and eat right and do things the correct way because more often than not they're capable of so much more than they actually think same thing to a lesser extent with the pessimistic group then you have the realists there's actually not that many realists then you have the optimists not that many optimists as well i would rather have someone be a little bit too optimistic than be realistic right? Because that optimism, that excitement, that is what drives you forward and actually pulls you towards your goals. Then you have the delusional group, probably not the best. Like you don't want to tell people, oh yeah, like you can get like Ronnie Coleman, just, you know, eat right, train hard. Maybe a little bit of delusion, like a few grains of it is okay, but excessively delusional is probably not useful. If your head is in the clouds, you're not going to be squatting a lot of weight. And it's really only the highest goals that require genetics. I've said this before, I wrote this in my next book. 99% of people can have a top 1% physique compared to their peer group. Because most people, they're crumbling with age. They're not taking care of themselves, they're eating whatever they want, they're, they're not actually even going to the gym consistently, let alone training hard. And so if you're patient, if you learn a lot, if you work hard and you're consistent with it, you're gonna go really, really far. And you can absolutely get a top 1% physique. And that's not that hard, okay? 1%, it shouldn't be that impressive, and it's not something that genetics is a prerequisite for. On the other hand, if someone came to me and they're like, I want to run a 10 second 100 meters, and I ask them, I'm like, so like, what are your times right now? That's a pretty lofty goal. That's like Olympic level kind of stuff. And they're like, well, I just cracked 15 seconds. Yeah, this probably not gonna happen. Unless like you're eight years old and you just cracked 15 seconds. No, I've been training for 10 years. It's just not gonna happen, okay? So sometimes delusion gets in the way of your progress and that's not good. Now, is it better to be delusional than fatalistic? They both have a lot of downsides and I would say being closer to the middle and more realistic is probably a good idea. But if you had to shift one way, I would shift towards optimistic for sure. And if I had started in this current internet era, I might have just given up, right? Like, what if I had heard, oh, like, 
if you're a distance runner, you're probably slow twitch and you're going to just be built like a twig your entire life. It's very pervasive and it's very convincing and often it has the veneer of science based. Like, oh, look at this study. Look at how these people responded. Those people aren't you. And I do realize there is a survivorship bias here. And there's also a positive feedback loop situation going on. So the people who respond well to training, they tend to keep training and then they get even better results. They work even harder and you get this upward spiral. But a lot of that upward spiral is not necessarily genetically determined. If you're on a dog shit training plan and you're under eating because you got to see your abs the whole time and then you don't see results, it's easy to blame your genetics, but it might just be you. On the other hand, if someone is successful at a certain task, often there is a bias there. Dave referenced Johnny Candido, who said that anyone can squat 500 pounds with moderate training. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I think it's because he is a very gifted squatter. He's a very gifted strength athlete. Obviously, he's worked very, very hard as well, and he knows his stuff more than almost anyone. But there's definitely a little bit of like, you hear this and they're like, mm, yeah, it would be like if I said, yeah, anyone can get 17 and a half inch arms because I have 18, right? Like, if I'm here, everyone can get to here. That's not really how things work. And I try to always be at least semi realistic, right? Like, if someone is in a position of authority and they are delusional or they are fatalistic, they are not doing the viewer a service. It's a disservice kind of a balance between inspiring people and motivating people and then just blowing smoke up their ass saying you know anyone can get to 24 ffmi anyone can get to a certain level of strength or arm measurement or whatever there is that balance and i think i've walked it pretty well i try to be honest while also uplifting people um please let me know if you think i haven't done well um I do my best, but again, there is that balance, and I realize not everyone is going to agree with my perspectives. And Dave actually asked the question, should we focus on genetics? And his answer was no, and I actually agree because it doesn't necessarily change the process. It's not necessarily actionable information with the exception of if your goals are super, super high. So again, if you want to run a 10 second 100 meters or you want to be, you know, uh, a world champion natural bodybuilder or something like that, in that case, it is actionable information. And if you don't have the genetics, you might just want to pull the plug at a certain point. Like if it's been 10 years and you look like, okay, and you still have goals that are way up here, you know, you might want to become a little bit more realistic. I definitely subscribe to Dave's channel. We will be doing a podcast later today, and it'll be out probably in a week or two with a mystery guest. So definitely check out his channel. I will link it in the description. Anyway, that is all for this video. Uh, grab a copy of my book. Is it going to get you the same results as me? No. I've never said that. I've never even implied that. But it will absolutely help you. And at the end of the day, that's what I'm all about, helping you to, as cliche as it sounds, become the best version of you. All right, that's all for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.